Privet Katila Wandingruski Desu. So this is a first part of a new series that I am planning for this channel, which I have called Countering the Enlightenment. So the purpose of this series uh, is to well counter certain Enlightenment talking points, whose philosophical roots have led to disastrous consequences in the modern day, because they are used as the philosophical underpinnings of the current liberal globalist order, which is destroying Western civilization, and if we're going to be honest, the entire world, uh, if they have their way. So... The reason it's important to counter these Enlightenment principles and ideas is because they serve as the root and stem of various leftist thought. And in order to effectively counteract them, you cannot just debate or defeat them use, you know, using their own premises and moral outlook. Because if you do that, you're going to lose. You must undermine the very baseline of their arguments and worldview, and then create a new one that is based on truth. And only then... Can you properly defeat the current globalist order that is undermining our very civilization and destroying all that is good, decent, and virtuous, and wiping out the unique peoples of the world from the face of the earth? So that is why I'm making this series, and I hope you enjoy this first part. So the first video of this series that will counteract one of the most, one, what I think is one of the most dangerous ideas that came from the liberal enlightenment. So in this first video, in a word. What we're going to counter is this idea of equality. That is the goal. The idea that we must this this idea of equality that we must pursue as a matter of policy, as an end goal of everyone becoming equal. And in, according to the current order, we must achieve this end goal of everyone becoming equal by any means necessary, because we are all created equal. Or in other terms, we are all born as a blank slate, all equally capable of doing anything, and thus any difference we see in the world or any sort of inequality must be because of our social institutions. Now, you could see from this premise that, that is the current underpinning of the worldviews of this current liberal paradigm, you could see how, how evil could come from this. This is why liberals want to, or globalists want to control our world and our life and our country. Because they want, if they, if they think you could, the different, they could socially engineer us to be whatever we want because there is no biological, uh, imprint on humans is all socially constructed it's all a blank slate then they could do whatever they want we're just mold like a dough that they could create for themselves you know that they could mold into whatever they want for their uh controlling purposes um so we can see the many evils that come from from this from the modern day arising from this delusional and misguided ideals and foundation the idea of equality is a goal to reach because we are all born equal leads to the very totalitarian liberal encroachments that we see you know from trying to erase the traditional peoples of the country because all groups are are somehow interchangeable to the abolishment of merit gifted schools and programs you know the downgrade you know degradation of success and excellent that and excellence as that elevates certain people at the expense of others because if some people are more successful and excellent than others that just means they got more privilege and had more uh better um you know they they had a better uh uh up, you know, uh, more favoritism, and so that's unfair. That's why they have to be brought down to the lowest common denominator. So when you blind yourself to the realities of inequality to try to bring everyone to a similar standard, and as I mentioned, you'll merely bring everyone down to the lowest common denominator. So, you know, this is why we need to talk about why equality is a lie and why this is a unstable and un something that will destroy our civilization, at least make it it just won't work. It's a false premise. So human beings are not born equal. You know, that's just a fact. We are all born with certain biological facts that are encoded in our DNA, and this has become even more true as we study our biology than it was when, back when these first ideas were created in the 1700s. So if we were all just a blank slate and our differences only come from society, then liberals reasoned that we can control, socially engineer, and mold man into an ungodly concoction, all human beings are thus reduced to atomized pieces that can be moved around and changed by social engineers to create their perfect utopia. If only those dogmatic bigots weren't in the way. So let's start at the individual level. Every single one of us is born because of our genetics with certain inherent traits which will lead us to different paths and with different difficulties and challenges in life. Things like intelligence, you know, differences in intelligence, which have, you know, intelligence in a, in a wide variety of ways. Athleticism, you know, your athletic ability. There's a reason why certain people are just, the way they're, 
the way their genetics works makes them able to maybe swim better or run faster because of the way their leg was structured or the way their lungs are. Uh, some people are born with Down syndrome or certain genetic diseases. I mean, that, I mean, if you think people are going to have a similar, uh, you know, equal ability to reach somewhere because they have Down syndrome, then you're wrong. They're going to have a tougher time to do, succeed. Um, how handsome you are, your various personality traits, your base instincts. Do you know, have you ever had that like gut feeling like that? Didn't, you didn't, you didn't just, you know, there's certain things that you're just in, you have instinctually that you're you ha, you're that are encoded in your DNA because of the past and so forth. So each and every one of us is different. Like there's no, no none of us are similar. Some of us can be more similar than others, but we're all not clones. We're not clones of each other because of that. Because the and this didn't come about because of society. You didn't become beautiful because of how you grew up, or you didn't become intelligent fully because of your circumstances. A big part of it is your genetics, and that's why we see differences between people. I mean, that I mean, I think everyone knows that. Like, you know, it's not like we're not born blank with a blank slate. Everyone's perfectly capable of having equal success, right? I think we all, agree. I think we should all understand that, but for some reason, a lot of people don't. Um, some people just are smarter than others, and others will require more education and schooling to even match them. And sometimes, no amount of study will make someone get a subject than someone who just gets it naturally. Some people are just good with numbers or are, ve or are better at memorizing facts. Others can visualize things better. That's why some people gravitate towards certain things in life, depending on their genetics. On personality, some people are more aggressive. Some are more human-centered and compassionate. Some are just psychotic and lean towards criminality. Some are introverted or extroverted and so forth. You know, and genetics mean by definition we can't be a blank slate because genetics program who we are. I mean, that's... You know, it's not like we we. It's not we program the gen DNA. The DNA programs us. Uh, we are pro born with predestined leanings and factors that make us who we are and guide us in our life. Some people are so aggressive, so antisocial, and such that they are more easily led to the, into the criminal world. That's why certain people are more likely to be criminals. It's not just like oh, certain society failed them. Some people are just lean towards that sometimes. Some are so good with people skills that they go into social fields. Well, those who are born with Down syndrome have a much harder time striving for success than someone who is more with a mind of Einstein, like Einstein. I mean, that's the thing. Like, if you took someone who has a brain of Einstein versus someone with Down syndrome, they're not going to have equal chances of success. They're going to both go to different paths in life because of where they lean towards. And sometimes, no matter how much that person studies, there's a limit biologically how much they could understand. So, you know, we're not born with equal opportunity. And thus, we cannot social engineer an equal outcome. That doesn't mean you, 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 know, you have to prevent the Down syndrome retard from trying his or her best. You let them have all the chances that they have. But by, the very, by their very nature, we must understand they will have success that is unequal to other people. So that's the thing. You know, we are all different. And by that definition, we're going to have inequality. You cannot socially engineer that away. All right, now let's take a step up to the group level as well. Let's take men and women. Just as differences between individuals lead to differences that we see among individuals, group differences lead to differences between groups on average, obviously. So the biggest example that we could use is how men are just stronger than women. This is because of testosterone, muscle mass, bone density, and so forth. This biological fact is why we see men gravitate towards physically demanding jobs, not because of some patriarchy or social construction that tells, oh, you know, the patriarchy told women, we don't want you to be a Navy SEAL, be part of the special forces. Not that. It's because biolog there's a biological fact that men are just much stronger than women, and they could handle that much easier, much, much easier than women. And, and not just in that, but any, in any sort of physically demanding jobs. Look at construction, for example. Um... But on the flip side, for example, women, because of their nature as having to be mothers, evolutionary speaking, are more, nur more nurture-focused and human-focused than men. This is why women are mostly teachers, therapists, and social workers. Now, it's an average, right? You can find differences in the average among groups. Can you find a woman that's stronger than a man? I think you can. Now, that's such a big biological difference that like 95% of men are stronger than you know, women on average, right? But you could probably find someone, and you could find a man who's more uh, human-centered than, or more nurture-focused than a woman, you know, who likes girly things. Um, 
And so, you know, like, it's not, uh, it's not like groups are all totalizing different, but again, there's groups on average are different and that, that will see groups be on average, diff- you know, have different average outcomes, right? That's why men and women have different outcomes in life, where they go and such. Now, um, you know, this truth that we find in gender, we could also find in race, you know, there's different averages that, you know, these different averages will be reflected in how that racial group performs on average. It's not institutional racism that blacks are, for example, more criminal or less successful. It's because of genetics, such as an IQ and aggression proneness. You know, that doesn't mean that the average uh, African is, or black is uh, going to be, you know, there's no such thing as someone, a black person that's not, you know, there could be a black person who's smarter than an Asian or less aggressive. It's just that on average, we see in the statistics, they are, you know, on average, they'll be, have a lesser IQ and a bit more aggressive. That is not racist. It's just acknowledging the facts. And, you know, those averages will, you know, play out in a, in the societal level and civilization. Now, one thing I want to say is that I'm not a full biological determinist by any means. The truth of the matter is that it is a mix of nature and nurture. There is definitely an effect on people and how they are raised in terms of the culture they are born with, the, you know, the societal institutions from schooling, their parents, uh, the community, etc., you know, the values and virtues that their community instilled in them, uh, and the experiences in their life and their own individual initiative. You know, all these things, I kind of talked about it in a previous video on the four factors of man, um, but... You know, these things do have a play. And yes, you, you need to have a good culture. I'm not discounting culture. Culture is important. You need to have good social institutions. The thing is, people focus on one of the, you know, the current liberal paradigm focuses that they could only on the social institution and somewhat on the culture. Because that's something that you could mold and change uh, a lot easier. And But the thing is, if you ignore the, but as I mentioned, the baseline is biology. So you can't just focus on one of it or else you're missing out the main thing. Um, so the biology in, uh, creates the baseline of what we're capable of. Think of it as like a, it, it sets like the, the playing field. How you play on that playing field is up to culture, societal institutions, and you yourself. But some people have a bigger playing field and are able to have more capabilities to expand. Um, you know, uh, but to take the lie that we're all created equal is just impossible. We know the blank slate is a lie, and since it is a lie, the goal of equality will only lead to misery, decay, and destruction. It will bring down us, uh, you know, to the lowest common denominator, as I mentioned. We are not all born equal. We are unequal, and any society should recognize this fact instead of trying to change human nature totally. The actual truth is, is that the human race is divided into different groups that have a right to their own countries, and that these groups will create different outcomes in their countries, because groups are not only unique, but they, are, they also vary in, in a variety of biological factors, which will lead to different results of success in the real world and in their countries. This is why different countries have different de- developmental levels. Um, there will be differences between where and what men and women do and succeed and fail in, in the real world. And... Then also at the individual level, each of us have a unique DNA imprint that makes us good on some things, bad at others, and this will lead to differences. The truth of the matter in the world is earned hierarchy, it, and that is what is natural, and that and we should let people rise and fall based on their capabilities. Nurture the best of us, let those with bad genetic luck do things that fit their skill set instead of trying to expect them to be of equal success with others. That's the thing. A lot of people maybe think, may, I think a lot of people actually agree with this, that like, okay, Nature has a big, pl- you know, sets the foundation. You know, culture and societal stuff also play. It's a mixture of nature and nurture. But the people don't want to explore the um, the implications of that because they think it's, like, mean or racist. Because it's like, oh, well, that, me- that means I'm just saying that, you know, people can never be of equal outcomes. Well, that's true. Well, that doesn't mean that, you know, someone who uh, who's ugly, who's just born with a, a genetic disorder or is, uh, you know, or, you know, just a very, you know, let's say have, they have a bad roll of the biological dice, you know, you don't, like, just prevent them from trying to succeed. You know, you say, hey, what is the best this person can succeed at? You know, maybe they surprise us on something that they are actually good at. But the thing is, is that, like, you know, we should not expect them to be of equal, uh, have an equal um, outcome as opposed to someone who might have a better genetic outlook or a better genetic focus. 
And, um, you know, that should, that should be expected, right? I think we shouldn't expect everyone to have an equal chance. You should instead let them focus on what their strengths are or if there's nothing they're particularly strong at, just whatever they, the best they can. Don't prevent them. Just try let them do the best they can. Just don't expect an equal outcome. So I think it's not that scary about admitting that people are going to be unequal. But I think that's what's holding a lot of people back. Now, when we talk about this idea of equality from the Enlightenment, there's actually some good things from that kind of idea from the Enlightenment that we could actually still use. Like, I'm not saying the entire idea that's come from this idea that we're all create, that all people are created equal is, uh, is wrong. I talked about how it's not true in a lot of senses, but there's some things that uh, came from this that I think we should still keep. Uh, the one thing I wanted to talk about is the idea of the rule of law. You know, some people say this is equality under the law, but obviously you can't treat people differently. You can treat people differently in some respects. Like you treat kids differently. Obviously we treat kids and adults differently. That's not equality under the law. Or, you know, for example, in any, any conservative worth of salt will understand that heterosexual marriage is the only type of marriage that's allowed. That just, you know, treats gay people differently, people who want to marry their sisters, people who want to marry multiple people, etc. You could treat different people, you know, you don't have to have every single group have equal under the law. You treat citizens differently than you do foreigners, for example. That being said, as a, you know, generally the idea of equality under the law, mean, at least the way I interpret it, uh, it kind of the same thing as the rule of law, is that, you know, um, you know, this is how I think it should interpret it. Rule of law means that despite our status, you know, our wealth, our capabilities, and so, and so forth, the way we are we govern our society is through laws and rules. And no matter who you are, you are subject to them and shouldn't be treated differently because of it. So here's an idea. Here's like an example. If you murder someone, let's say we have a rule, like a law against murder. You are judged based on your actions of murder, not because of who you are. You know, just because you're the king or the president or a senator or a rich aristocrat, just you are judged if you murder someone. That's it. You're, you're like, well, because he's rich, because he had a lot of good things, we're going to like not let him be judged by the law. No, you are judged by the law. It doesn't everyone's equal under that standard, right? Under no matter if you're king to a janitor. Um, we're all judged by the rule of law. And in this case, you know, since we're judged by the same rules that go for all of us. So this rule of law is something that can be used from the Enlightenment. But just because we're treated to the same rules does not mean we're all going to be all equal or have equal outcomes. Some of us will break the rules more often than others. But the important part is that we are judged based on the rule. And then, and th and that point, we let people fall where they may, which will be unequal. Some people, will, some groups and some individuals will be more likely to break these rules than others. Uh, but it will be the fairest system and one that conforms to the natural human condition. So that's the thing. We could have equal uh, rule of law, right? But some people are going to be more criminal, and some groups are going to be more criminal. We should expect that. But, you know, you don't just, you know, just because someone commits, a, but if someone commits a crime who comes from a group that doesn't usually engage in criminality or who, you know, maybe he was perfect, beyond, you know, before that, he or she, um, well, he committed murder. He or she committed murder. So you have to judge them by that, you know, just because they, you know, he was less likely to commit murder doesn't mean you don't judge you know do you treat them differently than from a person from a group that is more likely to commit murder it's not the differences at that point don't matter it's just based on that standard right but you know we should still expect different outcomes so to conclude the blank slate is a total lie we are born with differences that are innate to us and this extends to groups and these differences lead to people to different outcomes in life which are unequal and so to groups as well. The groups will have differences. Because of this, we are not born equal, and trying to socially engineer everyone into equality is a fool's errand that will lead to destruction. You know, what the globalists want is a, is a singular mongrel, you know, slave class to control, that, like little units that they can mix and match and move around, you know, or just interchangeable units that they can control for their, for their game, for their utopia. But this, that can't happen. If we're, since we're different. You know, equality is a false god, the blank slate is a lie, and while yes, culture and social institutions play an important role, we cannot ignore what sets the baseline for how we will fall within the hierarchy of society, which is our biology. The rule of law is something that is good that came from the Enlightenment, but the idea of everyone being treated the same by, you know, the idea of everyone being treated the same by some law standard, uh, that's a good thing. But that does not mean that we should expect the same outcomes, the same choices, and so forth. We should expect inequality and earn hierarchy in a is 
is normal is what is what we should expect in a normal and just society. So I hope you enjoyed the first part of this series on countering the Enlightenment. I currently have four other uh, episodes or videos that I have planned. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. So I hope you guys like this video and subscribe to this channel to see more of my uh, content. And I hope you share this video around if you can. So aim high, wander on from America with Russian love.